The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. And good morning in Kern County. It is just after 5 o'clock on this Tuesday morning. I'm Alex Fisher alongside Elena Rusk. 17 News is your local election headquarters, and it has been two weeks since Election Day. Votes are still being counted across California, but this morning a clear picture at where some of our biggest races stand. Yeah, the Associated Press last night projecting Republican Congressman David Valadeo will defeat Bakersfield Assemblyman Rudy Salas for California's 22nd Congressional District seat. Yeah, the race between Valadeo and Salas was one of national attention as it was one of the handful of California House races that could ultimately decide the balance of power in the House of Representatives. Extra attention was added to Valadeo specifically because of his vote to impeach former President Donald Trump, one of 10 House Republicans to do so, and one of two to win their primary, as many face more conservative and Trump-backed challengers. Valadeo only adds to the slim Republican majority already expected in the House. So let's take a look at where the results stand with 98% of the precincts reporting Valadeo has 52% of the vote to Salas's 48. All right, and Valadeo releasing a statement last night, reading in part to the election workers in Kern, Kings, and Tulare counties. I appreciate your hard work over the past couple of weeks to make sure every vote was counted fairly and accurately. To my constituents, those who voted for me and those who didn't, I will continue to be a representative who puts the Central Valley first and works tirelessly to improve your quality of life. All right, now with each party narrowly in control of one chamber of commerce, both Democrats and Republicans are preparing their next steps after the midterms. House Republican lawmakers say they're planning investigations into the southern border, the origins of COVID-19, and Hunter Biden's business dealings. But they could face a tough road ahead, with questions over whether Bakersfield's Kevin McCarthy will have enough support to become House Speaker. President Biden yesterday making light at projections the GOP would make big gains during the midterms. The only red wave this season is going to be a German Shepherd commander knocks over the cranberry sauce on our table. Time Democrats poised to elect new and younger leadership with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Majority Leader Steny Hoyer resigning from their posts. They're voicing their support for Congressman Hakeem Jeffries to lead the Democrats now. Back here at home, Brian Smith conceded to Jeff Flores last night in the race for Kern's third district supervisorial seat. Flores extended his lead over the retired CHP assistant chief yesterday afternoon in that update. With this latest update, Flores has 53% of the vote to Smith's 47%. Smith says he called Flores last night to congratulate him and wish him luck. Smith also released a statement that reads in part, Thank you to everyone who supported and helped me. The best part of this whole campaign was all the great people I met. Now to the 16th State Senate District, the race tightening significantly. The latest results from Kern County put Republican David Shepard and Democratic incumbent Senator Melissa Hurtado within less than one percentage point of one another. Shepard narrowly leading right now with less than 500 votes. And Measure K, a one cent sales tax increase for unincorporated Kern County, got a boost in this latest update. The measure passing as of now by about 1,000 votes. The teenager convicted for starting the Porterville Fire Library fire that killed two firefighters will be released early from custody. That is according to the Tulare County District Attorney's Office. Captain Raymond Figueroa and firefighter Patrick Jones were killed in the library while responding to the fire back in 2020. This September, the teen was, or was sentenced to six months in juvenile hall. But a Tulare County judge ordered the 15 year old to be released on or before December 19th. The teen was also sentenced to eight to 10 months of probation with grief and PTSD counseling. The judge ordered the teen must do 100 hours of volunteer work and write an essay about why he set the library on fire. In addition, the teen was asked to write a letter of apology to the families of the firefighters killed. Meantime, the man accused of running over a woman while she was sleeping in Jefferson Park pleaded not guilty to gross vehicular manslaughter while intoxicated. Court records obtained by 17 News show Hector Robles admitted to being drunk and recklessly driving through the park back in July. Police say Anne Frances Guyton was sleeping on the grass at Jefferson Park when she was run over. The coroner's office ruled her death an accident and says 
She died from blunt force trauma. Robles is being held on $100,000 bail and is due back in court next month. Well, now to our signature issue of pedestrian safety. Bakersfield police trying to find a driver who hit a man and took off early yesterday morning. It happened about 2.40 on Buck Owens Boulevard near the Bakersfield sign. Investigators say a man was crossing the road outside of a crosswalk when he was hit. The suspect's vehicle only being described as a dark colored sedan, last seen heading southbound on Buck Owens Boulevard. The man taken to the hospital, his injuries described at last check as life threatening. Anyone with information on this case is asked to call police. And the California Highway Patrol has announced a maximum enforcement period through the Thanksgiving holiday. This means extra officers will be out in force beginning at 6 p.m. Wednesday evening through midnight on Sunday. The CHP says 42 people, including 16 pedestrians and one bicyclist, were killed during crashes last year during that Thanksgiving period. CHP officers made more than 1,000 arrests for driving under the influence during that same period. We have some breaking news uh, from overnight. An investigation is underway this morning after a person was hit and killed on Weed Patch Highway near Highway 58. We are still waiting to learn more from CHP, but our photojournalist on scene says the body was covered in a tarp and a coroner van arrived shortly after. Weed Patch Highway was shut down in both directions about two and a half hours ago. The road has since reopened. We will continue to provide updates on this story as soon as we learn more. All right, now to headlines around the nation. President Biden heading to Nantucket today for the Thanksgiving holiday, joining nearly 55 million Americans expected to travel for Turkey this week. AAA predicts this will be the third busiest travel season for Thanksgiving since the year 2000 and just shy of pre-pandemic levels. NBC's Bree Jackson reports from Washington. The Thanksgiving travel season is among us and Americans are ready. It's really nice. I miss my parents and it'll be really good to be with my family again. AAA predicts nearly 55 million people will leave home this holiday, most by car or plane. Record snowfalls last week caused mass cancellations and delays for flyers. But there's hope that brighter days are ahead. So we're definitely in better shape than we were this summer. I was extremely concerned about the delays and cancellations we saw in the early part of the summer. Airlines say they've staffed up for what's expected to be the third busiest Thanksgiving travel season in more than 20 years. At this time, we would like to begin boarding. Falling just shy of pre-pandemic levels. I hereby pardon. President Biden taking part in the annual tradition of pardoning two turkeys, chocolate and chip, and urging families to get COVID-19 and flu vaccines to ensure a healthy holiday season. Two years ago, we couldn't even safely have Thanksgiving with the large family gatherings. Now we can. That's progress and let's keep it going. And if you're going to a holiday gathering, experts say the busiest times by air are today, Wednesday and Sunday. On the roads, it's Wednesday and Thanksgiving Day. The roadways are going to certainly be crowded. So pack your patience and bring your appetite. If I don't burn the turkey, I'll be thankful for that. Travelers are giving thanks that gas prices dropped 11 cents nationally in the last week, according to AAA, but are still higher than previous Thanksgivings. Today, President Biden and the First Lady will travel to Nantucket, Massachusetts, where they will spend the holiday with family. In Washington, I'm Bree Jackson for 17 News. Meantime, one of the men who helped take down the Colorado Springs nightclub shooter is speaking out. Richard Fierro, Fierro is a decorated Army vet, and he says he and another man tackled and held down the gunman during a lull in the shooting. Fierro says he was at the LGBT club on Saturday night when his wife, their daughter, and her friends. But when the shooting started, he wanted to protect everyone there as if they were family. I support my community, whoever that is, okay? I love everybody, um, and I've never said anything different. I'm not a hero, I'm just some dude, man. <laughs> everybody, everybody find their heroes this Thanksgiving at the dinner table, you know? The mom and dad, or, or aunt and uncle, or whoever you want, okay? But that's, that's what you guys need to do. Five people died and 18 others were hurt, 17 of those with gunshot wounds. Authorities say that the alleged suspect, who remains in the hospital this morning, potentially faces murder and hate crimes, but formal charges have not yet been filed. 
All right, now to some headlines around the state. Over a billion dollars going toward keeping California's last nuclear power plant up and running. The federal money is meant to help the Diablo Canyon plant in San Luis Obispo County operating for at least a few more years. PG&E says the plant provides about 8% of the state's electricity. It was supposed to begin going offline in 2024, but Governor Gavin Newsom has been pushing to keep the facility open to help with California's power shortages. The money comes from President Biden's infrastructure law passed last year. And take a look at this. Several teenagers had to be rescued from a roller coaster last night after it became stuck at a California Fun Center. The teens were riding the coaster at the Scandia Fun Center near Sacramento when it stopped moving about 65 feet in the air. Firefighters used an aerial ladder truck to rescue them. It's unknown what caused the coaster to stop moving. No one thankfully was hurt, but I'm sure it was quite scary. And what's funny to me is I grew up outside of Sacramento. I have been to Scandia many times and I'm quite um, shaken, is that the right word? Yeah. Because when something's close to home, you're just kind of like, ooh, wow. Yeah, kind okay. of scary uh, roller coaster right there. Yeah. Well, tens of thousands of UC student workers remain on strike for another week. Administrators and the unions are still negotiating this morning, but no deal has been reached. So this means lab assistants, researchers, and other UC employees are off the job. The strike comes at a time when many students are preparing for finals, and many are off for Thanksgiving, leaving the fate of how those exams will be graded up in the air, employees are demanding an increase in pay to help cover high living costs and other assistance. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.